Welcome to the Finance Committee. Today is what is today? 13th of February 2023, and we have a full house here. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Jim, do you want to start with any comments or, or thoughts? Uh, or No, just to kind of uh, break off from my budget message. Uh, the budget that you were going to consider tonight on the town side is uh, pretty lean compared to some of the previous years we've had. Um, really, uh, only one new position. It's a deputy fire chief position. Um, to help with some of the added EMS responsibilities, uh, but that's really about it. No, no major changes in each each department. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'm good to go, ready to roll, and let's. Great. So the thought process is since we oh, just a, a yeah. quick overview question. Um, I noticed on your revenue summary and expense summary that you've got union contract estimates. So the budget does not include any union contract, uh, future union contract pricing, right? I uh, know that's covered in the, the right, but, on the other but side. But how about the um, non-union? Is that that's already built into the budget? That is okay. Thank you. Good. Any other? So the thought process for tonight, since we met in November, went through with several of the department heads, got the presentations, the planning, the comments, was to just jump into the the budgets and start asking questions. If that works, uh, figured we best place to start was with uh, just go in order. Start with the uh, general government. Uh, which looks to be a 0.6% increase from the previous year. This one, I, I was going to kind of go through each group, but let's see if there's holds or comments, but uh, this is a different budget than most were being smaller. Are there any specific questions from anyone and wants to just get started on the general government side? We're just putting a hold on it like town meeting. And I, I figure. Bob, how are you going to let's, that? I figure let's go through it and write. We'll go in order as we go through. Okay, Hopefully, if you have questions. works for everyone. So, okay. I would normally kind of pick the part each subsection, but this one was large. Any questions on general government for Jim? For anyone? I yes, but I got to capture. You got to capture. You know, well, okay, I we'll soft shoe till you're ready. Um, on general government, the treasurer and collector, we have a retirement um, coming up. Um, when does the posting go for that? Is it prior to the person actually leaving the position or not? It's anticipated retirement, so we can't... Anticipated uh, but not confirmed? Yeah. Okay. Um, and also under that department, also on the postage, there's a note there that um, it's twice the amount and that maybe we should be going to two times of the building it would make the cost less but it needs a discussion and who's that discussion with is it with if it's, it's me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it's a discussion you have to have with the selectmen and everybody because if we decided to do two mailings a year instead of four for real estate taxes that's what the big discussion is correct postage that would be an option to be twice a year mailing instead of four. Okay, thank you. Other questions? You're still looking. Yeah. Up. Um, see, I had a question about the vacant clerk's position. It looks like it was split between groups. I see it under the select board, and I saw it under somewhere else, but it didn't mention. I'm assuming it's the same position. One's for eight grand, and the other's for sixteen. Trying to find it's under the selectman in town administrator's budget, and it just looks like it's split between the two groups. But there was no reference to that, so I just was making. So it sure. is currently split. We actually are um, splitting someone, one particular person, with the clerk's office right now. And what the proposal would be is to um, eliminate a position in the finance department that has gone unfilled due due to COVID. Um, transferring that union position completely over to um, uh, the clerk's office and uh, the, the clerk position, the part timer in our office, we just would find someone 15 hours a week or something like that. We split it between the two. Okay, that was thank you. I'm sure you're gonna... Okay, I have a question on the town clerk also. Um, more of a clarification. Um, Prior to Liz taking over, Danielle was here, and when she left, Liz had to go, correct me if I'm wrong, Liz, there you are, 
Um, you had to go through the clerk certification, which you accomplished. Um, is that something that the assistant town clerk also takes part in so that hypothetically if you go out sick or retire, she or he could automatically come in until there's an appointment? How does that work now that we're getting into the process of it happening more frequently than it did previously? Uh, she could. You know, it's not mandatory. If she, if she, if she had the interest in it. I've asked her. She hasn't yet. Um, I can see if she wants to do it this upcoming fiscal year. Um, otherwise, uh, it's something she can still you know, obtain. As you did. Exactly. Okay. I wasn't sure if there was a process to go through, and with Danielle leaving as quickly as she did, we didn't really get a good feel of how the transition would work. So going forward, now that we have a little bit of time to look at things, I wasn't sure. Thank you for the clarification. And one other question. I guess it's going to be the Josette show. Okay, mm -hmm. Doug's ready. Um, books and periodicals, what do we have left to preserve? Are we almost done there? No, we have a lot no. to do. And quite honestly, um, my, I, I'd like to put in a capital request probably in the, uh, um, the, the summer when we do capital and say let's get what we can get done for 20. I think we talked about 25,000. And uh, instead of just pe piecemealing it, you, you estimated it to be what? Oh, it's probably, it's probably 250,000 to do everything that we have. Wow. Probably you can get two books done nicely for uh, $5,000. And if I want to preserve all the birth records, the death records, um, the marriages, the uh, you know, the Italians are from 1700. They all still need to be done. Um, the thing that's, it's the oils in your fingers that, you know, if you're constantly touching them at this point, no one's really asking for that unless they're doing a genealogy. Mm -hmm. So, um, since I've been in that office, I have them now. Um, everything goes on a bond paper, so we don't have that issue in an absentee um, notebook for them to go through, or a slip for them to go into. So it's really the stuff from 1800s forward. Going forward, we're doing what we should be doing, and it's catching up with the ancient history. Right. And we started that, what, 10 years ago? It does come out to Ron. I'm not sure. So it's got to be seven, eight years ago anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least. 10. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was surprised to see it's still there. I thought we were further ahead with it. but. Nobody uh, asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll say that again. Sorry. We have people in the hall, and I just said that we can make more room for people. Do you guys want to come here? Yeah. And, um, so this question, then you guys can come in. You got seats there. Yeah. I know Sal was out there. Now, now they better take the seats. Now you have to sit. They're like, this is great. We get to hide out there. <laughs> <laughs> While well, we're getting ready, did you have right. a uh, question about the environmental consultant and the 10% raise? I'm not sure who owns that contract. I know it's shared by multiple towns, but I'm curious. Yeah, a consultant? Uh, energy consultant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the green coordinator. Uh, right. And so I'm not sure. It just seemed like a fair raise, and I wasn't sure how that, if it was part of the agreement that we knew about, if it was something that let's just say Sharon owns and they gave them a 10 percent raise and we kind of have to no so that's coordinated through Norwood um, and that's the estimated figure they, they provided to us that person's recently uh, moved on to another position I think at Providence and so they're they're searching for someone actively right now and they were hoping to bring in up I think it was about a seven thousand dollar spike or something they were looking for the three towns to split a, a part-time clerk for about 21 grand so Um, I'll keep going. Keep going. Um, let's see. Question about, let's see, who is this? The town accountant. Um, I see $600 for shredding services um, for the retention disposal law, but I didn't see this in any other department, so I wasn't sure if this law applied to other groups as well. 
Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so that's something that we just started doing this fiscal year in FY23, and I'm just absorbing it through my budget. Um, and it's just uh, the records re requirements through the state, we're starting to get rid of all of our stuff so that we stay on the cycle and every year we just dump, you know, whatever year that we can. So it's, a new, it's new for us. But it doesn't apply to, I guess my question was, no, other departments. It's really just Not just all. I, mean, I know um, Treasurer Collector has the same situation, HR payroll possibly, I don't know. Um, but it's more the finance department. Okay. Brian? Um, is DPW building maintenance in this one? Yep. No. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Just uh, some clarification on the SWCAC up on this, the field, yes. the concession stand, and what that you know, cleaning services are, and is that something that the town should pay for? Is that something that the users should be reimbursing the town for? That's something that Don put in for this year, and Don, I, yeah, you're right there. Um, he, can, he can better speak to it, but he had come to me asking to put in for it. Eventually, obviously, we haven't taken, we haven't started renting out those fields with the bathrooms, accessibility, and everything, so we haven't been able to address that. But it's going to allow him to get, you know, a year or two under his belt, know what the costs are, and then if we were able to pass the costs on to the different user groups, certainly. Can I follow up to that? Is that going to start in July? As soon as we decide to open it. It hasn't started yet. As soon as they decide to open it, we start using it. I'll help hire somebody. So in the spring, Doug. Um, maybe he'll just use some of his budget, what he has for now. So, so that'll, how will that impact this, the current budget then? Do we have? We'll make it work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Other questions on uh, general? Yep, go ahead, Joseph. Um, the DPW maintenance, um, this is my constant comment. What are we doing with the Marathon House? Um, we might be, um, <laughs> it hasn't really been discussed publicly, but we're, we've asked the food pantry folks if they have any uh, usage for it. They really only have, it's a freezer over there, right, Donna, a big one, um, that they're trying to kind of phase out and eventually Take that down, so knock it down altogether. Don, Don really wants to see it. it we we get, you know, these utility charges going on over there. We could just save the funds, and um, so it's coming down when, when they have. It's their, not so. a terrible large amount of money, but it's not being utilized. Yeah. So you know, green space is better than putting money out. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Um, town report and annual audit. The old PEB review was that just completed in 23. But I see another amount in for 24. The the audits conducted every year. The old PEB review is every other year. The old PEB uh, review is every other year. Yes. And there's an interim report that's right <laughs> under the OPEB line. Okay. Okay. So audit is every year. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I had a question about the town clerk. Um, I believe, Liz, you're scheduled to retire, right, at the end of 23? Eh. Maybe not. I, uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just curious if if that was still out there, if the budget no, reflects. Oh, okay. okay. Never mind. I was going to say, is that enough money to for replacement or recovered? So, all right. <laughs> Other questions? General, general government. Joseph? The Ponds Management Committee, is that completely dissolved as oh, there's no, nothing still in here at all? Yeah, there was an article about them a couple of weeks ago in the Boston Globe. So, Correct. Yeah. But there's nothing here which we have been staggering three year. So that comes under capital. So they do, they do their chemical, their pond chemical treatment under capital. And usually what we try to do is whatever the request is, Landis usually submits it, you know, get them situated for three year shots. So Correct. that's why. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Go ahead. You, you're back to um, back to public works. Um, I, you have a, a big 
You have some very tenured employees. And I wasn't sure if you're expecting any retirements coming up. It seems like you've got a lot of guys who have. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. Um, and then, I guess I was just looking at the uh, the heating usage for the different schools, and I was just curious why Boyden is at 15 grand is so much cheaper than all the other schools, which are 45 to 50 thousand. I think a lot of that depends on the, the type of heating it has and the heating of Boyden. Uh, there are a lot of areas at Boyden School that uh, they're basically HVAC for electricity, uh, so they're not going to use as much oil as some of your other buildings or gas, uh, whichever one we use. Thank you. Do you have more? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Josette? I'm all set for this section. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. I'm good. You're good? I'm good. Huh? I have one. Yeah, no, Sorry. go right ahead, please. Um, on the assessors, there was just a small line in there for MLS, and I was just curious if there's a schedule um, of properties to be offloaded or sold, and I didn't know if that was related to MLS listings for... Duly noted, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I think that covers all for general general government. Jump into uh, public safety. Let's start with the police department. Uh, and just I noticed public safety overall is a 1.8% increase from the previous year's budget. Questions? Go right ahead, Joseph. Um, my question was with the police department. It's two cruises are being replaced. Traded in. Traded in. And how old are they and what is the mileage? The mileage is probably, we haven't determined which cars are going to go to yet, but okay. um, higher mileage, closer to 80 or so. Um, and they're going to be three years old. So we've tried to Three years old? Yeah. Okay. And I checked and um, Patrick sent me a thing for capital budget um, that there are no cruises or um, motorcycles being requested the, on capital. Given the conversation we had back in the fall, that was one of the, it was made clear to me. In California. That, yeah, and yeah. your video wasn't very good. So <laughs> the, the message that was given to me is, you know, the last few years I've cut to um, make sure that we can do some other things within the police department to make it work. But um, I took the message from this committee in the select board is, you know, if they're, if it's ongoing, you know, fund, fund it through the operating budget, at least those two cruisers. So. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Lee. This might be an educational question for me, but on the <clears throat> stipends for sergeants and patrol, so actual over the last few years have been hovering around 20000 and the budget <clears throat> for 23 and 24 goes up to 80, 88. Just curious, like, is there something new, or is it just based on how so it... Through their last uh, collective bargaining agreement, they were given a 2% stipend for all their medical training, uh, the two include okay. um, Narcan, defibrillators, first responder, and then the EpiPen, um, and then anything else that was added in the future. Okay. And it kicked in in year three, and we're currently in in year three of the contract. Anyone else? Fire department. Well, I'll we'll get to that. Yeah, just okay. just checking. Anything else for the police before? Just, is that the same thing with the educational stipends too? Is it, that, that's a separate thing. But it, it's higher because of the new contract. Uh, well, it, it would be affected by their base pay, yes, but it's a percentage tied to their base, so that would be affected by it. Yeah, we have more people as well. Um, than we have to the past, but that's all based off. Of, uh, so the education is too. Sorry, Chief. Yeah. Um, we didn't tie that into anything in the contract. It's just, honestly, he's 
been bringing in people with higher degrees and they've been getting you know their masters or whatever else. Yeah, yeah. Most everybody has a degree at this point, so we actually require that our military service. So basically, everybody has a degree. Okay, thanks. That's good. Yeah. Um, it looks there's two, you know, new hire number one and new hire number two that don't have names next to them. Are those so new positions, the or they're just they've so been open? We're in the process of filling those spots now. Okay. And they work the time. So that'll get us to 48 offices. Actually, technically 49. If we want to retire in April, we're trying to get ahead of that now. So we will be at 48 offices. Uh, Any other questions for the police department? Let's go to the fire department. Chief, any questions for you? Um, is it mandated for the fire department to have somebody on it that is an electrician? Or is that just somebody who happens to have that degree while working as a firefighter? That license, I should say. No mandate that I'm aware of. Okay. Because I know you need to have at times, and you've had a, um, a fire person who retired within the past couple of years who was a licensed electrician. We have, all right, that's what I was curious. Okay, good. But it's not a requirement that you have. It just happens to be that way. Okay, thank you. Mark. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Chief, I noticed when I was coming out of church the other day, you got some work being done on the front door. Is that um, an emergency situation, or is that something that we had planned for? No, that's repair work. Uh, okay. On the strike and so and it's hard putting a, the vehicles on the tape. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just the nature of the beast, and yep. the way that you pull into that station is uphill, so you have to aim at the ceiling, mm -hmm. and then the truck levels off. So you, you can't follow the lines that are on the floor of that building when you're back in the apparatus. So okay. These are the results of an accident. Okay. And you're fully staffed now, or do you still have some positions you're trying to fill? One more in the academy right now. Uh, he'll be out on um, March 17th. Okay. That'll put us at 4, 11, first week. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I have a right. few questions. Um, right ahead. So stipends for the ambulance, it's about a $75,000 increase. How does that work? Why was there just an increase? New people. Okay. And then the new people was one part of it, and then uh, cost of living adjustments with the subsequent contract. Okay. Okay. Um, the line for ambulance maintenance, it's its fluctuated and it went down for the upcoming year. So I didn't know if the year we hit you know, 16,000 was that unplanned and so it's normally a certain amount. Just curious if that's so enough. That, so that line bounces around. Um, it's variable. Uh, we can't yeah. foresee major repairs that will be needed. In FY22, we did uh, spend a lot because we had two major repairs. It had to fit A3 with new tires, which cost 3000 The A3 also needed a liquid spring module, which cost 2700 And major repairs to the AC unit on A1, which is 34 So if you ran into unforeseen repairs needed, you'll just borrow from another, another line? I take it from other lines. Okay, all right. Stay within the expense lines. Okay, and... My last question, there's a new line item, or maybe it's not new and just reallocated. It is the, uh, I think it's the firefighter supplies, or it's other supplies, it's $16,000. Just curious what that is and That's where. That's for the new hires. Okay. Uh, so the cost of gear has gone up by 45% over the last few years. Um, we continue to experience major increases in all of our stuff that we uh, order. Uh, we do it through public bid. Um, through the state bid list, but the uh, gear currently for that set, uh, for the two sets of gear, is 11068 and that's um, just for one person, and I have currently have another position that may be opening up, so I'll be having to outbid that person as well. Uh, the gear is all tailored to each individual, so um, it adds to the cost. Any other questions? For the fire department. That was Others? Okay, next up, inspectional services. You got that right? Yep. Any questions here? Going once. Going 
twice. Huh? Uh, is that it? For public safety. Measures. Weights and measures, thank you. And, yeah, there we go. Sorry, I just got to get to the right page. There, I'm going to go back here. It's easier for me to manage there and then flip. <laughs> Any questions? <clears throat> just a curious um, part time permanent. I, I don't see any, anything in there until this, half this coming year, so just wondering what that is. So, back in May, I think it was May, maybe April, uh, the state used to handle all of our inspections. They'd have someone come out. Um, they'd assign it to someone. We wouldn't really have to think of it. I think we paid uh, $5,000 a year for professional services, never had to worry about it. We got a notice saying that uh, given the fact that we're over 25,000 people, they're no longer offering a service to cities and towns over 25. So we were kind of scrambling. Um, uh, Commissioner Crowley was able to find someone who's a uh, weights and measures person in Framingham uh, is willing to come out and do us part time, and, and that's that's well, that's why it's it's changed around a bit here. Thank you. Other questions? Emergency management. Any questions there? Guys are easy tonight. Jeez. Uh, animal control. Um, Jim, could you just explain the relationship for our animal control? Were they previously on staff and now we share with three towns? How does that work? Just so we contract um, about a, three years ago. How about this is going to be our third or fourth year. Um, um, we have a relationship with Norwood when um, John Splain gave his notice. Um, I knew that job was going to be pretty hard to find, to fill. Um, we worked with Norwood to come up with a joint agreement, uh, an interlocal agreement between the two towns that the select board signed off on, um, basically saying we'll do a, um, a regional one, just the two of us right now. We'd like to bring, you know, I'd love to bring Sharon or someone else in, but right now they're all filled. So uh, the way it's handled is there's three employees, they're Norwood employees. We don't have to worry about their health insurance, we don't have to worry about their OPEB liability. Uh, we just simply contract with Norwood directly on this one. Um, the, the woman who is assigned to us reports directly to the chief and deputy chief. I, she does keep some office hours, right, in her office? She comes it's in. all in Norwood. Yeah. She just goes yeah. over and checks on. Yeah. But most of her stuff's out of Norwood. Yeah. Response here, quite frequently. What? So um, that's basically the way it works. They're, they're still using our ACO truck, um, and we actually, one of the rangers that we were getting rid of, they, they needed a third truck, and the it had it's a, kind of somewhat rusted, but um, they, they had the need for it. So um, it's, it's been working out good so far. Okay. Thank you. Mark and then Brian. Jim, is this a annual renewal agreement, or do we have a, a long-term commitment with them at this point? It's... Um, I, th I think it's still year to year. Just it's still in, pretty much still in its infancy. Last year we saw a, a pretty big spike in the, the cost, and actually the committee was pretty. I think was yes. pretty yeah, divided by the yeah. vote, if I, yeah. if I remember correctly. <coughs> and um, so it just the, the manager and I touch base at least a few times a month about this and some of the other stuff we we're working with with Norwood. So, um, and I, that's one of the things I told him. I said. Tony, we, I can't have a big jump this year, and he, he agreed to it. So they're actually taking up, um, it's not a 50-50 split. They, they can, I've seen their numbers on paper. It's more like probably 60-40 split. Brian? So I supported this move when it first got implemented as I thought it would be a savings to the town, and it's clearly was a mistake on my part because it seems to be a quite drastic increase. Um, I'd love to see a breakdown of how many calls per year over the last three years we've had with this. Um, this it keeps escalating, so I just I don't know if there's other options out there. The problem with this position is it's 24/7, 365. Um, John, when he first retired, we had a tough. We went through I think two different people filling that yeah. job when I was still the assistant. He came out of retirement, helped us out for a few years to get us there. It's just one of those jobs that's like thankless at times, and it, it, it was really tough to find someone. So we can get you the breakdown of the, the calls over the last few years for sure. Thank you. Okay. Yep. There you got him. Perfect. I think that was it for public safety. We're going to do the schools on Thursday. So what's, what's it next? DPW? Mm -hmm. 
seven. So I'll try to go in order for each section. I think that was a little more efficient. I like that better. Sorry. I was jumping around. Where we were jumping, yep. Learned my lesson first time. <laughs> uh, engineering. Um, there is. Okay. Um, I was just curious about the dam inspection. Within the spreadsheet, you talk about needing $5,100, but then in the summary sheet, it's zero. We moved this, there were two or three professional services line items, essentially, and it was a little confusing, so discussion with the director, we decided to take okay. any of these professional services and lump them into the one uh, line item, I don't call the number right now, but the $30,000 line item. So the dam inspection number got rolled into that. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Engineering. All right. Next up, admin DPW administration. Let you get there. Thank you. <laughs> None. Any questions, comments on administration? Seeing none. Uh, highway division. We brought all these people in. We got to at least give them. It's okay. <laughs> <It's over. laughs> all right, highways. We're moving on. Uh, snow and ice. Snow and ice. How's our snow and ice number so far this year, Jim? Yes. <laughs> I think we have about six twenty-five left in there. Does that sound about right? Yeah. yeah so. I think I saw <laughs> street sweeping. Uh, came through and cleaned. The street today, is that uh, <laughs> getting a head start on? Yeah, is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, my only question is, what happens if to that money if we don't? I mean, balls to free cash. The last few years, um, we've turned. Oh, actually, the ones on the sheet. So that 420, the 604, and the 688. Um, but the balance there, that year that it was 420, so about half 400 fell to free cash. And it just helps to contribute. I think the last few years it's been almost 200 turned in. So um, let's not jinx it, but we're looking real well there. <laughs> you know, the, the salt price, sand and salt price, has it doubled or tripled through? It doubled. Doubled. Um, so that was a concern when Rick and, and um, Drew came to me with that bid. Like, we, we, do, we actually buy it off the state bid list, and we do a consortium with, I think Medfield's the lead, lead one on that one. And it's still, the, the prices are through the roof, so we're lucky. As we all know, there's plenty of time to go still here in New England, so we'll be cautious. Yeah. Um, Jim, do we actually have surplus material that can be held for next year, or would you <coughs> stockpile it? it? It has a shelf life. So what we do is at every spring, we, we fully stock the uh, salt shed. Um, so it's literally coming out the, the front of the salt search. So we, we do that already. Okay, so yeah. what, whatever's there now, though, is available for next year. It doesn't have a shelf life and have to be oh, scrapped. No. Okay. Kathleen, yeah. Hey, Jim, remind me, we're not allowed, oh, sorry, through you. Oh, God, <laughs> um, don't worry about uh, that. We're not allowed to decrease that line, right? No, we're not. That's one of the reasons. I think I have to buy 250 or something this year, but... Once you go up there, you can't go backwards on it. And um, years ago when I was the assistant, I, every year, my first five or seven years on the job, we'd always come to the finance committee and say, we're out of money, we, that's the only one we can deficit spend in. And we'd have to, we'd take from, Dennis would give, kick in some money for overlay, we dip into free cash. Um, so we, we increased it to about 800,000, and it's been around 800 cents, and every year I had I think two fifty, a thousand dollars to it, or whatever. But once you go up, you can't go back. Joseph, has the truck that spreads the slurry been delivered yet? It hasn't, right? The the new Mac, Tommy. It hasn't been. That hasn't come in yet, right? Yet. Yeah. No. Wow. Should be updated uh, for a month. Be built right now. Hopefully, we never need it the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Uh, next up is traffic control. Yep. 
just, um, Jim, that the increase in the equipment, uh, what was it, the professional and technical, the 30,000? So we actually, if you recall, uh, we transitioned all, we, we purchased our street lights, our, own, our street lights from Eversource. Um, so there are zero, there and that's why the decrease in the budget, because the electric bill has gone down. But what Rick and I believe Drew budgeted for was technical support from the company that's installed it. So if a light goes out, it's no longer, we just simply call Eversource, it's, it's on us to fix it. And uh, the same comp we contracted with the same company who installed the lights for us. Okay, so. and uh, it's probably been about a year now, has it been almost a year that yeah. the install's been going? Yeah. How many have had to be replaced or? You know, five, five or six, but we did eight. Patrick saying overall it was 1,800 800. throughout the whole town. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Great. And the, and the electrical savings pretty significant. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Other questions? Move on to solid waste and recycling. The way you looked that up, Denny and Melissa, we that compact we had a compactor installed at the compost site. I believe it's in service now, right? It's officially up and running. We haven't opened it for residents yet, but business will do so. And on site today, we dropped the um, 42 yard dumpster, and then I was on site last week and Tuesday to dump it out. Just learning how to operate it. And we think that how many dumpsters do so we right go through now, a month? We do approximately 15 to 17 hauls out of the site per month, and we're charged $195 per month, and they're estimating. Great. That's great. Excellent. And I think that was the question from uh, Mark Sullivan had sent. So we're good. Leanne? Does that mean we can you can cut thirty four, thirty thousand out of the budget because of this update or that's already it? factoring that in. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, where do we stand on our long term um, trash pickup contract? I, I know it was supposed to be negotiated. So this is Last currently um, the first year of a five-year contract. Year. So this, the budget you people are considering will be year two. Okay. Say that again. This is so the budget you, you folks are considering is year two. Gotcha. Brian? Just, just a comment. Has any thought ever been given to Robbins Road having an entrance and an exit on the other side versus just a single entrance exit? I... Do you know, Drew? The ideas around it. Um, and the other thing that we're bound by, and we've kicked around ideas about changing the hours and everything, this is a zoning board decision from like the 90s, early 90s, something like that. And it, it really it, it really restricts um, that site, hours of operation, how, how it's looked at. But I agree with you, it is, it's, it's kind of hairy going it's into busy. that. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Move on to cemeteries. Any bad jokes on this topic, so we'll move on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, vehicle maintenance. Hold on, can I get back up to? Um, okay. Yep. Solid waste and recycling. Jim, I'm just looking at your your note. The town administrator increase for two hundred and ten thousand. Um, that was. So when we were factoring that in, it would, we miscalculated some of the um, the numbers. That's why Melissa and I got together with the contractor and the, the board, and, and that's why we needed to increase it by two hundred thousand. Vehicle maintenance. Of interest. Is that it? I think that's it for DPW. One question for DPW. Do you have anybody that is potentially going to be retiring within this fiscal period? I mean, you talk to personnel or? Um, Workers you don't know until they some, hand there's you? There's some yeah. employees who have been here a long time who could go. That's what I was looking at. Currently. 
Uh, but they like working here, so we'll have them. That's our advantage. Great. Getting to Health and Human Services, which is a 2.7% increase. Board of Health. Give people the shuffle for 10 seconds here as I mumble and try to fill the void when someone comes up with a question. No? All right. Next is Council of Aging. Any questions? <laughs> or do you know I all? have <laughs> no questions. I think they do an outstanding job. Um, the amount of people since the pandemic that are now coming in and they're younger, 60-ish, as opposed to the 80 plus. Um, there's a whole new vibe within the building. They're now serving breakfast um, Monday through uh, Friday. I saw Maria Hall at the legislative breakfast earlier this week, last week. Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Um, yeah, I guess that was. And yeah, it kind of gets all confused <laughs> together. Um, and congratulated her on the outstanding job she's doing up there because they do everything at the high school bring it down to the center um, and it's during school schedule so if there's no school there's no breakfast but it is ex I mean it's amazing how well it's been received and we have a lot of gentlemen specifically also women but basically gentlemen who are widowers and they'll come in and they have their breakfast and they're there for the day and that's what you want they're between the pool they play upstairs and everything. Um, it's been highly successful. Thank you, Carrie, and her administration. They've done an outstanding job of keeping everything together and progressing with it. Jim, yeah, you got good, Mark. to say to yeah. it? No, just that um, they, they, what they do over there is amazing. I, all the pictures for the 80 for Brady. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The treatment they got, they were like stars over there. Yeah. Uh, to you, Mr. Chairman, um, has the um, public parking situation uh, subsided where the high schoolers are monopolizing the parking lot and then walking down to the high school? Or do we well, still there's still mission? parking over there. Okay. Um, we've tried to cover up the front lane. We, I asked Drew to put in some uh, uh, signage up there, you know, municipal parking only, town business. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't heard any complaints, but have you? Any, yeah, Drew shaking his head, and um, I'm sure there are complaints. <laughs> it's a limiting factor for us. And I, I know the schools, they do work with us when we have bigger events. You know, the principal puts something out to the students. It's tough, and it's one of those, you know, I think you're going to alienate people either way if we, we, we restrict it. So it's a volatile situation, I'll put it that way. I assume that problem gets more of an issue come later spring as juniors start getting their driver's license and want to start driving than you have now who probably all haven't hit the six yeah so that'll be a more of a spring adventure than now adventure For you, is the parking lot too small your parking lot is our parking lot too small we have 53 spaces oh. but is that an average of 145 people there a day right now so there's, is there a plan then to provide more parking for nope. this building? No. There's no place to We're go. really constrained on that site because it's the, the Superfund restrictions on there. The intent of the parking spaces across the street was to deal with the overflow parking. Something we didn't anticipate was the high school students parking there. Um, what can we do? We can restrict the parking um, and uh, not allow it. I think that would, there's no, there hasn't been a, a group or some people to come forward and, um, and say they want to do that. but. I think you'd alienate some high school parents who are residents too. So it's one of those, we're all ears. We'll, we'll listen. I've talked to the police department about it multiple times. Um, but if there's a push to do it, the select board can certainly consider it. But there's no way to add more spaces to South Street? Oh, not, do you know of, Melissa? I mean, we're pretty boxed in there because of the restrictions. And to even put those basketball hoops in the ground a few years ago, we had to get a DEP order, and we had to um, get permission. We had to make sure that uh, uh, one of the people who was doing the work was OSHA trained, and they were only going down, you know, 
three or three or four feet. It was just a cylinder tube. So, yeah. Other questions? One to Veteran Services. Is is this? Do we pay this person and then Med, Medfield pays us, or yes. the other way around? Yeah. No. Uh, so. Similar to the Norwood agreement, but we are the lead community on it. Um, we've been doing it for, for some time with Medfield. It works out pretty good. Um, when we actually approached Norwood to see if they'd be interested in joining our district, um, in the price tag was just through the roof. Um, they, they have support staff in place, and it was going to be, Walpole's share was going to be at least 75000 plus Medfield's share, and um, plus, plus all the expenses, so it just didn't work out. We actually... The board just appointed someone um, this past week, and we're looking forward to getting her started. I think she's starting February 27th. So. Any other questions? That covers uh, Health and Human Services. Next is Cultural and Recreation, which is a 1.62% increase from the previous year. Public Library? Good. How are you doing, no sir? I sit up here. I think they're all scared. <laughs> <laughs> a kiss of death right here. Uh, Tell us. Uh, yes. We're just going to freeze over. Yeah, I know. I know. I just, I just ruined it for everybody. I'm sorry. Uh, this is my uh, trusty chair, um, Deputy Michael Welcome. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, I was curious about the the jump in the part-time permanent positions, and I wasn't sure if that was a result of, like, required staffing, or if it was... Well, not required staffing, but um, let me look at the numbers. It went from um, 381 to 400. We had a um, children's programmer that we've added some more hours to, and um, I think that's really the biggest significant change we've made. The rest of it is just, like, COLA, and I know we have the contract to, to do it. So the library employees, there's two different non-union and union yep. people over there. They have about 10 in the union, and then the non-union people, um, mostly administrative staff like the assistant director, children's librarian position. Those um, are the professional, yeah. Yeah. So um, they, it's kind of a weird split there, but that's one of the big reasons. <coughs> I believe that position that Sal just mentioned, did, we, did you increase that from yeah, an extra four hours four a week? Yeah, I increased four extra hours on that one. And then the expense line for your books and periodicals yep. that meets the requirements for... Yeah, well, um, the figure in and of itself doesn't, but we have other sources that we add to it. So that number plus the other sources will... Everything in this budget meets every requirement that the MBLC puts in front of us. So I won't have to fill out a waiver this year, which I'll be very happy about. <laughs> Perfect. And so this is a good budget for us. Excellent. Uh, Mark, what's the next population threshold that you have to go? Uh, I knew you, someone was going to ask <laughs> yeah. that question. It's fifty thousand, okay. and oh, just like last year, I don't intend to be here when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? The increased cell in the periodicals is that related to the population with the census? The books in the periodicals. Well, what'll happen is the reg is that we need to spend. 13% of the total municipal budget on materials. So obviously, as we have COLAs and step increases in the salary side, that drives up the number, so our target moves up as well. So that number will be increasing over the years. We try to manage it, keep it you know, as, as, as a little an increase as possible. But, um, but yeah, that will increase as our overall budget increases because the two are related. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments, thoughts? All right, move on. Uh, thank you. Yep, thank you. Didn't have to sit too long. <laughs> <laughs> Recreation. Any questions here? Soft shoe in between. Um, I had a question about the technical, professional and technical. You, you just made a comment that the actual cost was 15000 but you're only budgeting ten, and I wasn't sure if we needed, if it came from revolving funds or how that yeah, extra five the, grand. The difference comes from the revolving funds. Um, it had spiked up when we changed over um, software companies, so we tried to cover some of it internally. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Um, when, do, when do we get the lawn games? <laughs> We're working on it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Parks Division. Any questions here? I should have come up with some more questions. I felt guilty here. Mm. Keep moving. It's our new system. What's that? Our new system is working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark Wood. Uh, Sorry, guys. Historical Commission? So, on my end, Denny, I, I know there's no one from the Historical Commission here, but um, th this is kind of to go from zeros to they requested 4,100. I'm recommending 2100 on this one. This is something this, the Historical Commission has been advocating for some type of line in the budget for many years. Um, I remember the, the former chairman, uh, when he was living in town, advocated. And I, I put something in there. Uh, I didn't fully fund everything. I, I cut it in half. Just my thought process is they have been asking for it. The, a few years ago, we changed the bylaws to... Uh, I think uh, restrict houses. I think it's like a six-month moratorium. On does this sound familiar, Jim? It's one year on and over 100 years old. Okay, so I'm just mindful of that, and uh, they don't come before them a lot. You know, I want to see how it goes for one year. Um, to go from there. Excellent. So, question: My house was built in the 1800s. So I would, ha if I wanted to hypothetically to sell it, I'd have to get permission from the historical. No, it's so. just if you require to do a full demo. Okay. Mark it down. Okay. Thank you. So I tear your house down. Yeah, well, they did across <laughs> the street this week, so. <laughs> uh, town celebrations. You didn't want to buy that for a parking lot, was it? <laughs> <laughs> when it was up for, um, oh. What's the word I want? Senior moment. They wanted to, to um, not to sell it, but to auction it. Oh, really? And they knocked at our door and wanted myself and our next door neighbor to buy it. And I says, why do we need it? I've got two driveways. Yeah, yeah. Town celebrations. So just an item of note on this one. Um, we're going from uh, uh, 4000 to 18000 in Prior to that, it was 2000 and 1500 um, The I'm budgeting for um, the, the the great work that the people are doing um, who did the lights for downtown um, over this uh, past holiday season. And also, if we need some additional funds for the fireworks celebration on the, the night before the 4th, um, uh, we can dip into that. I'm just mindful of there's been years where it's crunch time, crunch time, crunch time. The firefighters do a great job of going out and raising the money, but I know one of the big benefactors have passed away in the last few years, and he always came in at the last moment and said, okay, well, how much do you need? 15 grand, no problem. Make it happen. And with his passing, I'm just mindful of that money might be needed uh, for there. So, Jim, you, you, I heard you say 18 grand, but it's 10 in here. Um, it was ten in there. I originally tried to get. I, I wanted to budget to the eighteen thousand, but so you cut your own budget. Cut, 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 and you know some progress. It, it, we're making some progress there. Eventually, it's. The, I, I'd like to see it be twenty five thousand. So. Okay, but ten. It's ten for, in the I budget. Yeah. Perfect. Excuse me. The holiday season, the lighting there was absolutely gorgeous, and all the people that volunteered did an outstanding job. Um, unrelated to this, but the 300th anniversary committee, um, I know we've set money aside. Um, will they be doing a presentation at town meeting to give us an update of their progress um, and kind of like get more people interested in what's supposed to be happening real soon? <laughs> I, I would think so. I, I'll talk to Bill Buckley, the chairman. Uh, he's coming before the select board, I think either the next meeting or the meeting after that to provide an update. Um, they do have they have a considerable amount of money right at this point. They, uh, Representative Rogers and the delegation got them an extra hundred thousand dollars within the last two months from the state. Um, we put one hundred and fifty this past capital process, and we do fifty. So it, they have three hundred thousand dollars there. They, they, 
at their that they can use. So um, I'll talk to Bill about that for sure. Anyone else? Trail committee. I'll just say a comment. Uh, love the new trails down by the, the new fields. So. Uh, Gary Riggett and the, the Trails Committee do, do some great work with all yeah. the trails throughout town. Much appreciated as a neighbor in the community there. Anything from anyone else? All right. Next up is uh, Seth. So just to while you find the page or whatever, Denny, the debt budget has gone up significantly, and that's all attributed to the... Um, the, the borrowing for the, the middle school. We've been authorized to borrow 70 million, Jody, right now, by the board, um, with the anticipation that we'll borrow up to, I think it's either 77 or 78 million. Um, I'm so glad the, the board listened to our financial advisors and our finance team. We went out and took advantage of the, the rates before they went right up. Um, yeah. I think the average we're locked in between, we did two borrowings, one of 20 million and one of 50 million, the 20 million dollar one was the, the lowest. Um, and the, the, I think between the two, is it like three? We're in 50 million. 50 was the first one. It was the lowest, yeah. 50 was the lowest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so when you average them both together, it's close to three fifty. Yeah. 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 yeah, so when you average them both together, it's close to three percent, which is great. Awesome. Yeah, and that's a 16.35 percent increase from the previous year, but it's all tied to the yeah, borrowing from school. That, yeah. Questions? Well, as we discussed, just I know I may be opening up to some questions by kind of putting this out there. The school, um, the high school is still on the radar. They, they continue to work towards that. I'm expecting that they'll probably come forward in the fall with a request to fully design the building at a price tag of about $2 million. Um, if, if that goes forward, my recommendation would be to pay it with funds on hand. Don't, I've identified multiple funding sources for that on hand. Don't go out and borrow for that money. My hope is that it'll probably take, by the time we get around to the fall, that'll take another year, 12 to 18 months to fully design the building, and maybe by then the rates will have fallen and we'll be able to take advantage of some of that. I think right now in our debt sheet projections, we have it at 5.25. Does that sound about right-ish? Uh, you know, our borrowing interest rate on that one, but who, who knows where we're going to be in, you know, two, three years as far as borrowing and interest rates and everything, but... Yeah. It's on our, our it's on our plan. So Tri County? Tri County is not on the plan because <laughs> Tri County yeah, at a two hundred and eighty million dollar price tag with that school building. Um Wal they estimate Walpole's share to be about one million one forty five and that's over thirty years and the thirty years every year it's gonna change based off of our enrollment at the school. Um so that that's coming to a vote on October twenty fourth. Um and all it is is a simple question. Uh do you authorize Tri-County to move forward with the new school building? No funding source, no nothing. Um, and that's a problem not only for Walpole, but for the other 10 towns that are in it. So at the end of this month, the 10 administrators are getting together, uh, 11 administrators or town managers are getting together to kind of figure out, you know, how do we get the word out to the public? What does 1,145,000 mean for the town of Walpole? To me, if you do the 66-34 split, it's about 700 or so or change for the school, school department. Three or you know, three hundred or so on our side, I'd have to find it somewhere, which would mean cuts essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go right ahead. Uh, Jim, on that vote, is it a straight popular vote or is it so many towns have to Straight popular vote. If a thousand people vote in it between the eleven towns, okay. five hundred and one vote for it, that's okay. it's going. So they don't have to win a majority of the towns, they just have to get a simple majority of no. voters. They don't have to identify a funding source. So. Gotcha. Scary. They already have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tui yeah. Tuitions. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions on this? So, so, Jim, it looks, if I did my math, and there's no guarantees that I've done it right, it's about just under 7% of our budget is for our uh, debt service. Is there, you know, is that a good number or a bad number? I, obviously, we've got the, the good bond ratings, but, you know, is there a, where, where that number sh so are should you be asking, below. What, are we met? Are we? Are we like maxed out on our borrowing capacity? I, I know we're not from the yeah. time, but from a realistic, a, a, 
approach are we pushing the edge there from uh, well, uh, Cliff Snuffer when he was in, uh, involved with the board he always used to ask us that number and it's like some astronom astronomical number do you remember what it is Tony it's, it's like I think our equalized value is five billion does that sound right to you it's a crazy number but um, yeah it, it's a crazy number and it's I think it's five uh, percent yeah no yeah, I think it's five percent of the equalized value. I can I can find out for sure if you'd like to know. All right. I have those numbers somewhere. <laughs> we're nowhere near it. That that seven million dollars we're borrowing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're fine. All right, good. Other questions from anyone? Uh, next we get into is is the benefits. So on this one, it's obviously right. our health insurance. What's oh, I was going to say, yeah, oh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, did, uh, no other question for the department heads. If it's just, Now we're just down to the last section with you, and rather than keeping everyone to. You guys can take off if you want to, or stick Thank around you. if you want. Yeah, good call, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is very interesting stuff. How could you leave? How could you leave? I didn't want to put it all together. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think. Thank you. Your daughter said they, I'm like, did you, were you worried? And they're like, no, no one really knew it. That's your 114 million dollars in 10 minutes. I mean, in an hour. Well, remember, we did spend two full nights in the fall. But you're right. We realistically, we we spent a lot of time ahead of this. That was the whole idea, so we could get yeah. through this, it not have to have the presentations. Yeah. Who's getting cut? Exactly. Jim does all the work. So awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like all the improvements are, I mean, improvements, all the changes are so small, and half of them are going down. I mean, how can you really argue? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I thought there was a lot you more go, that it's lean. Detail. Yeah. 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 I appreciate what the department heads do to provide the justifications it saves a yeah because a lot of the questions i would have asked were answered in there mm -hmm. good so just a couple things so unemployment compensation obviously or a bit of an uptick on that one initially i think when christine entered it in it was about two hundred fifty thousand. when i was going through to make the bu budget work uh, you know i said uh, i think we can cut it down to 225 i had about a month's more worth of data our claims aren't crazy now I'm just mindful of you know the, the cost keep the cost of unemployment it's more I don't anticipate us doing any major layoffs but sometimes the schools like this summer we had a considerable amount of claims that were kind of unexpected for two or three months and it's that teacher here or there that puts in for it and they find in favor of it so that's why I'm asking for 225 in that way okay. um, and the employee fringe benefits line that's obviously our health dental all the uh, insurance is there um, it is up. Um, Maya has informed us we're going to see about an eight percent or so increase in um, our health insurance. It's not. It's not as bad as it could have been. It, initially, they told me budget for ten, um, so I was pleased with it coming in lower than ten. Obviously, yeah. Um, and dental is is fixed. Uh, we when we we switched over from Delta Dental to um, Harvard Blue, Blue Cross Blue, Blue Shield Dental. And part of the factors, one of the things to get us to come over was they gave us um, a rate freeze for the first few years. So we took advantage of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jim, can you give us that spreadsheet again that gives us the breakdown by 70, 30, 60, oh, 40 yeah, yeah. personnel? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we were working on it last yeah. week. Yeah, I can give I'm you just a... curious where we are in, in the population so, swing. One other, thank you for reminding me, Mark. We do budget, when you see that spreadsheet, uh, we budget an extra 30 people so Christine gives me where our what our current enrollees are and then I sprinkle in um, 30 people throughout the spreadsheet so we, we just want to protect ourselves if you know it changes every single month uh, you know ups and downs between people coming and going and everything when I, we started this in November the rates you gave me this week were they were off by you know, a handful anywhere between, you know, five and ten, it just fluctuates. So that's why we budget the extra 30 people in there. So sure, Mark. Yep, thanks. Brian. Um, Jim, on, on the unemployment, I guess I'm just concerned because it is so large and 
I remember a few years back with COVID, you had bumped it up and we never even realized close to what you had bumped it to because of it. Yep. I still think this is very large unless you know something that we don't, um, you know, compared to the last, even through COVID, we didn't even hit this 225. So is something new happening? Like how it teaches able to get unemployment during the summer, don't they get compensated for the year? Like Some of them put in for it, Chris, do you, I mean, so the schools, like in terms of that, like we have like a school side and a town side, so any like school teachers, the school department handles, any town people I handle going in. We actually have a company now that works to kind of help with the fraudulent claims and things like that. So, so what I could do, Brian, is um, we could run some numbers and just see where we're at. Um, it's because the last time I ran this was back in November. Um, to see where the claims were at. That's I, I was somewhat alarmed. I think Jody or Lisa, yeah. you guys came to me yeah, and said initially, our claims um, are up there. Yeah, th this year our claims we started increasing, but I think it's starting to level off, and we'll have a better idea when we get our next bill. Okay. Um, in in terms of COVID, though, what happened? We had to budget because you know we, we didn't did know, and people were collecting, but then we got reimbursement on that, so that's why you're not seeing the expense side okay. of that. Okay, perfect, thank you. And then I just had a quick question on uh, health insurance. And I know I'm in the private sector, we have a HSA and it doesn't cost as much. Is that something the town has ever looked into offering different plans such as that, a health savings account? We offer, so we do a flex spending account. I think that's my, my yeah. I can put it, I personally put aside $2,500 dollars per year pre-tax money and it goes on a little debit card that you know when the kids go get braces work or whatever we can just zip that through is that what you're talking about yeah but i think it's more, even more in depth and it's HSA a say we can't do because you need to have like a high deductible plan and we don't have a high deductible plan so we only qualify for the fsa not the hsa okay so in the other two things that we've begun to introduce the last within the last four or five years like we we offer our our Pretty good plan. It's a very it's a very good plan. But then we offer two other option plans with higher deductibles, lower copays. But you know the younger people seem to take advantage of that, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? And that was it for tonight, right? Well, tonight. For two things. I want to be done, but I want to just make sure I cover two things. Please. There's the elephant in the room. The one that jumps out to the page. Here is net metering. I went from 910 to 1 .6, almost $1.7 million right here. And that's more or less a wash because we make it up on the expense side. Last year, we were informed by our auditors that the way the town was taking in the funds. So back in 2015, 16, 17, somewhere in there, we entered in a net metering agreement with one of the solar farms, which actually brought in revenue to the town. It was roughly about 300,000, did it start that low, do you remember? Yeah, it wasn't that much. It was hundreds of thousands, less than 500, but so we were taking in the money and part of the deal was whatever we took in, 72.5%? Um, 72.5% 72 yeah. went, went out to the, the company. We got to keep the 27.5%, which is great, it's added revenue to the town. They didn't like us doing it that way. They said, you don't have an appropriation to do that. We want you to run it through the budget. So now we show it on the, um, uh, receipts. the yeah. local receipts and on the expense side here. This, this current year is the first year we've ever had to do it this way. And the numbers, obviously, uh, they're, they're not trending well for us. No, <laughs> you want well, to explain well, that a little bit? bottom line, they are. Yeah. The, re um, the, the revenue that's coming in has increased. So we're over budget, or we, I expect to be over budget on local receipts because of that. But then along with that, of course, your expense is going to increase. Bottom line, we're increased. <laughs> But so we have to balance the revenue and the expense budgets. Our appropriation is an increase, so. Your appropriation's increased. Yes. Can, but if your budget's at a certain number, can you still apply that? Can, or does that money have to clear free cash and then you? Yes. To, that's the problem that we had is um, initially it was set up um, through a revolving fund. Yeah. So at the end of the year, whatever money we had left, which was the 27 and percent, we would transfer that over to the general fund to call free cash. The Department of Revenue said, oh, no, you can't do that. And we yeah, checked the, um, the, the um, attorney of the day at the DOR and, you know, asked around other towns. 
and nope, it has to go through the general fund. So we have to have that balance. All right. But for this year, then, <clears throat> if it's higher, does that create a so budget issue or really we we budget issue? Yeah. <laughs> um, it does create a budget issue. We will have to address it as part of uh, whatever the in-year budget adjustment is, like mm -hmm. Article 4 or 5. Um, we've talked about it. We haven't solidified anything that we're going to present to you yet, but the, the thought process is we had almost $2.5 million in free cash that we carried forward, which is, thank God, we, we're doing it that way now, like having some extra money in free cash. We'll be a lot. We could take money from free cash, move it, um, get the authorization under Article 5 to increase this line item, and then when free cash gets certified, it's just in it goes back. August, it's going to go, back. go yeah. back. We just... We're still good. That's the way you want yes. to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is a procedural and accounting problem, but really the town's made more, will actually have more money as a result yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. So we'll actually have more yeah. money than what we budgeted. So with this increase, what we did, and on the, the local receipt side, we've increased it too. So we're anticipating. It's it's like, it's we never know what we're going to take in. Yeah. We think we'll take in this. Um, and again, it's only our second year doing it this way. So. Yeah. So we've been advised by our auditors, if you look at the revenue that we're projecting and the expense that we're projecting, it's not 72 and 27 and a half percent. You'll see that we budget our expense higher. Um, they've advised us to do that because we made the cut in the situation that we might be facing this year. Gotcha. So, so on this line here, you're marking it up maybe 10 percent as opposed to marking it up 24 percent on the revenue side. For the number you're putting in here. Does that sound about right or no? Uh, no, we're, we're marking up the expense higher. No, but I meant oh. you're, you're, you're trying to match a revenue number to an expense number. So this number of a, of a million eighty four thousand on the revenue side, it's not 20 percent higher. It's maybe 10 percent higher because we don't want to try to claim revenue we're not, we probably won't get. Yes, yeah. that's okay. correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. How much of a deficit do you think we're at at this point? On this year's so meeting. I, I was a little nervous, uh, but now it's starting to come down again, okay. so I'm not quite sure. Okay. But it, it's you know, it could be you know. Six <laughs> so. Yeah, but it's really not that big a deal because the Cause it's actually a, it's a net to the yeah. town. It's just a right. timing, and we've just got more we have the free cash to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the accounting, like you said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just work for you. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on the net metering stuff, um, what's going on with the South Street Solar Farm? Is that still kind so of it's still progressing. They're going, It's going slowly. Um, we met with uh, um, the developers' attorneys last month. Um, they presented um, some figures to, to Dennis and I. I wanted Dennis to, to check them out. I think those just came in a week or two ago. But it's just and so the oh, the owner of the property passed away. And I think his heirs took a while to, to deal with the, the whole um, that whole thing and the will and everything, but it's it's progressing. It's finally progressing and moving forward. So. Any other questions on the budget? I had a couple of procedural questions as we go forward, but just want to make sure we address. This I have an overall question on the um, unemployment. Hypothetically. Say you've got five hundred thousand dollars that you put for the line, and you use three hundred thousand. The difference between that does that automatically fall back to free cash? Yeah, just like any other budget. In the okay, episode. that's what I thought, yeah. but I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You know, one thing you may want to do is let us go back and look and see what we think as far as we're trending. But I know one thing that, like Larry Pittman was pushing for, he sent Denny and I a note. I'd like to, you know, see this line increased more. It's one of those. Yeah, I we we talked and we said it would be great if it could be five twenty five or to go up as the budget goes up. But just the way the budget worked out, I'm like, we got I I needed to balance it one way or another. But if we add any money to it of, of the regular budget, just keep in mind like the schools that's sixty six thirty four. So if we give them another one million uh, hundred thousand in there, bump it up to six hundred thousand, schools got to kick in sixty six grand right there. But if I'm able to pick up some money on un unemployment, because that's um, down at the bottom part of the budget, you may want to just kick it up to OPEB. Um, just something to think about. So and instead of putting it in towards, and if it's, I don't know, it's probably not going to be anything 
more than 50,000, just thinking it through it in my head. So, you know, six, you know, 40, 34,000 would probably go to the schools and we'd get 16,000 on the town side. It just may benefit, be more beneficial if we just put it all towards OPEP or something like that. Hypoth something to think about. Hypothetically, what about snow and ice? If it stays as is. What is where does that money go? Yeah. It'll close up free. This? It'll go to free cash and yeah. then we can free put cash. the money in the fall. Yeah. yeah. But not in the budget, uh, the budget item. Actually, question for you. So um, if at April 15th next year, we were looking at it and saying, our snow and ice budget did not spend X. Can we put an in-year budget transfer at town meeting to say take 150 from snow and ice and add it to OPEB as an in-year budget? Yeah, we could do that. I want to check on that. I, I know, you know, any other line you probably, you, you could, yeah. but snow and ice I'm not quite sure about. So let me find out about that. Okay. It, it being all equal and we, like if it was any other budget if it was you had a hundred thousand left in the fire department budget right we could transfer that hundred thousand over to whatever police if they're running short but Jody's right that snow and ice is governed <coughs> by okay. a different mass general law all right so this year's budget any trends or issues concerns or anything that um obviously we've just talked about the net metering but no, that's that's really the one that bothered me the most. I just didn't like it. Um, I don't like having to go in and adjust it, but I understand why. Um, yeah. But no, nothing, nothing big. Can you think of it? No, anything? everything looks good. It's okay. just the net metering. Uh, we do have one small year-end transfer we'll have to do, and that's because of the um, weights and measures. Just we had some payroll going through, but we had no budget. So yeah. it's, I think right now it's only five hundred dollars. So it's very very small. But other than that, no. All right, good. And then w the warrant should be coming? So I actually think I, I was out earlier today, um, but I saw that I got an email from the town attorney and it had an attachment. I couldn't open it on my phone, but I think he's, he got back to me uh, and I think he's made his edit. So um, once uh, we're good to go, I'll give you the draft. Um, there's a couple of things on there that's a little different and I wanted to make sure. The, the big thing I'm thinking of is um, the select board are gonna bring an article forward to town meeting. Um, asking to sell off some surplus properties, three properties specifically, East Walpole Library, a lot up um, near um, Kingsbury Street in Plain. It's up um, going towards uh, the gun club up there. Uh, it's about 40,000 square feet and it's just vacant. It's, per, you know, Carl and Carl's looked at it, it'd be valuable to someone to, to build a house on it. Um, and the other one is the old town hall. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure it was worded correctly. The, the board wants to bring it to town meeting and say, we have a report, which I'll give you a copy of it, um, that it needs about $5 million worth of improvements. Town, what do you want to do? We've, we've sent out two RFPs. We have gotten literally zero back on each of those RFPs. No one's interested in, in that building. I've talked to several local people who own proper, lots of property in town and have developed lots of property in town. And no one is interested in it the way it is with, you know, a 30-year license agreement to rent it as a restaurant or something else. Just no one's interested because they all go through there and they have these grand visions. But once they start crunching the numbers, you know, that I've heard it's starting around $2 million worth of improvements. And now our own report says $5 million. So um, okay. the board is going to lay it out for town meeting to decide whether or not to give us permission to sell it off if it doesn't pass. Obviously, we'll have to go back and, you know, start to put some more money into that building. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, East Walpole Library, that building is really not used that, that often. Um, and if you look at your, your reports in here, I think we spend about thir thirty dollars to $40,000 a year in utilities for the t Old Town Hall and probably ten or twelve for the East Walpole Library. So it's just one of those things, like Josette was mentioning earlier, with the... Uh, food pantry, that old site. It's just something we just keep putting putting money towards when it could be freed up in Don's budget for other things. So, good. Yeah. But the old town hall gym is that it's a historic building, obviously. It is. So if it was sold, it would have to stay, correct? No. It would have the exterior it. of the building is on the national yeah. historic registers. Um, that has to stay. The inside can be altered, obviously. Yeah. Any other questions <coughs> on this topic? Is it appropriate or not to ask of what the discrepancy is between the town and the school department budget? Um, 
it's my understanding, and I actually pointed it out in my um, budget message that there was a discrepancy. I think it was about four hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars between the, the different budgets. And I went in and worked with the school committee, the superintendent, a couple of board members, and we reduced it down to a gap of about um, two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. And I said, "Could you make this? You know, we'll split it in half. We'll." I'll figure out a way I'll increase some of the revenues in here, the projections and everything, and, you know, can you make up that 230 or 235 in your budget? And so it was, oh, yeah, this is workable and everything. And then the budget came out, and I met with the superintendent and the school business manager. I said, I thought we were on the same page. They said, yeah, we'll, we can definitely work with your budget. We, we got our word. But the school committee did still want to ask for that additional funding. But it's not a big discrepancy, and uh, Mike and Bridget were very confident. I think... Their budget didn't have um, retirements in there, and they, they, they thought through attrition that they could make it up. So that's why I made a note of it in the budget message. Okay. And so we have the school in on Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. My thought that we met with them in the fall was to take a similar approach and we'd not have the grand presentations, but just get into the budgets. Is that acceptable to everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I will um, let Bridget know. I guess just a just a general comment as we're potentially wrapping up. Um, I guess I was playing around on the clear. Is it the clear gov? Gov, yeah. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I I noticed, and I guess it's just my concern, is that the debt budget is getting so high. You know, I looked through the last ten years, and debt has always been you know f number six out of whatever ten the top ten priorities in, in the last year or so it jumped up to number four and so it's you know I know we have a lot of reasons for that the middle school in particular but it's just with the middle with the high school with the pools and, and all that stuff I just I get concerned about how big our debt budget is getting and I just you know thinking for the future when we have that free cash I just like last year I'd like to see stuff put in capital stabilization so we don't have to have as much debt and so yeah. It's just kind of a, a general comment. Um, and another thing that I, when I was going through the budget, I'm not sure if this is possible or not, but it seems as though there's a lot of things that almost can't be questioned because they're, you know, union increases or, or salaries. Um, I wasn't sure if there's a way in the future, not, not for this budget, there's a way to kind of identify that of our $114 million, you know, 85 of it is like mandatory salaries, mandatory benefits, that type of thing, just so we had a number of, of kind of almost what you could look at and what you couldn't look at. I don't know if I'm explaining it the right way. Mm -hmm. What's that? Uh, the, the discretionary piece, like what we Yeah, did. yeah, just kind of like it, it, it's just, it's a, it's a lean, it's a lean budget. Yeah, well, what's yeah, just knowing. What's tied in, I mean, you've got union agreements and contracts and most most of the money goes to wages. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have that, and then health insurance. You know, yeah, yeah you know, wages and health insurance would probably cover. It just seems everything. like there's a there's an awful big chunk, mm -hmm. and and I I don't mean this as a criticism. It's just kind of it's kind of like we can't question half the budget because it's tied up in like these various agreements. And I think it would just be helpful to to know what that number is. I bet it's more like seventy five percent, probably. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is you look at it and say, well, if we do have to go after personnel for budget cuts to cover a new school that's not ours, um, for every person you eliminate, you now have to increase unemployment by X. So your real savings is going to be a different number. Mm -hmm. You just can't turn around and say, yes, the schools are going to drop 10 people, and we're going to take two people out of this department, one person out of that department, and we're going to be covered. It's like, well, no, because now you got to pay unemployment benefits, um, or some of them will retire, and now you've got them on the retirement draw. So. So like years ago, we, we, like I think it was like 08, 09, the last time the economy took a dip. If I remember correctly, for every like um, three employees you laid off, it was you had to budget for one employee. So in the unemployment side, because that's what the yeah. that's what it cost to pay those three the employees uh, benefits. But it is you're you're right, Mark. Like yeah, if I lay off four, four police officers. I gotta cover, you know, call it three police officers. You know, I gotta budget for one in the other employee. And then budget. you're gonna have an increase in, a, in overtime because now you got a yeah. shift cover. Yeah. Right. So. yeah. In the fire, that's yeah. That that'll that's, really kick in. Yeah. So. Okay. So. 
But I think, Doug, I, I, I think I could put something together because, like, I'm thinking of the budget, like, um, sergeants and patrol. Like, that, that's a the, a whole group is a union. You know, that's $3 million, I think, for that line. And then, So I think I could probably put something together and say these are pretty much the fixed cost or whatever. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. like, you know, the Quinbell numbers are big, the, yeah. the stipends are big, and it just, as I was going through it, it's kind of like, well, this is a stipend, this is a union thing, yeah. can't look at it, I can't question it. And so I was just... It got me thinking about the overall number and how it kind of, you know, I, I hate to say what we can pick and choose from, but just yeah. knowing that number. All six of our contracts are up every this this year. All six of the unions have come in. Some of, some hand me a sheet that shows seven percent inflation or something like that. That's like what they point to. It might counter them as well. Those years where the inflation didn't go up, you you did get your colas and everything. But like their point to me is like. Look at what we're dealing with. I said everybody's dealing with it across the board, um, and they've been pretty good. We I think we have tentative agreements with three out of the six unions so far. So and we're working on the other three. So and the teachers were done. They actually a, a few contract cycles ago. We all used to be on the same cycle. All every townie and school cyber come up, but they took them off our cycle, and I think they just. I think this is year. One, uh, so yeah, they're completely off our cycle, like the, the school department altogether. So. Okay. Yeah, at one point they did a, their negotiation, negotiations went long, yeah. so they went retroactive a year and plus four years, so they're actually on a five-year cycle at one time. Then they went back to the three-year cycle, which basically put them off cycle from us. Yeah. Police did the same thing, too. Yeah. So past. unlike the school contracts, we have to bring our contracts forward to you folks in the yeah. town meeting. And explain all the, the changes and lay out the year one cost for each, each contract. So, you'll be hopefully you'll be getting all six. Uh, if not, we'll give you the remaining ones in the fall. All right. So, yeah. Um, in our schedule, is there an opportunity for you to block out a little bit of time to go over exactly how you came up with the re revenue estimates and how conservative or aggressive you were in certain pockets? Sure. Good timing. Because on, I highlighted, we have a, a, a tentative schedule that says we'll vote on the budget on March 27th. So um, between March 2nd and March 27th, we don't have any meeting scheduled at this time. So I'm sure we could put some things in there, uh, put a meeting or two together. And yeah, part of the idea was going to be getting through tonight and seeing if there were any of the groups that we wanted to call back. Um, we did, didn't vote on anything tonight. Fig one, we're also still waiting for the governor's budget to come yep, in. March 1st, yeah. March 1st, and so see if there are any adjustments or anything from there. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm mindful of some of the State House News Service just issued something last week that said their revenues were down a bit, but then the week before that they, they were ahead of schedule. Like Tuesday, <coughs> Tuesday morning, they said that the receipts in January were down 10%, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they have a surplus to start off with. Yeah. Uh, different administration now than what yes. we've had for the prior eight years. Yeah. So. Brian. Yeah. Will, will Tri County be here on Thursday? I didn't invite her in because I, I honestly, I, I assumed you guys might have some questions, and I was thinking, depending on how things went tonight, you might want to have her in for a separate meeting to talk. Um, she's actually very well spoken. She, she spoke she to with the board. Watching on the um, so I was thinking we could schedule something to, to have her we'll in schedule, in March. Yeah. Do we had her on the 27th of February? Because, I mean, that's kind of a, a light. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll see if, yeah. Okay. See what her schedule is. Excellent. Anything? Does anyone have anything else for tonight? We're back Tuesday with the schools. We'll take the same approach. Thursday. 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 Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, take a couple of days off. One of those T days of the week. So Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Before that, are you going to do an overall review before you take a vote or just bring it up for a vote for all of the municipal, like what we just did tonight? So technically, we just have to vote the whole budget. Yeah, and that's uh, on March 27th. Historically, we've gone through it and then voted one yeah. after the other. I didn't want to do that this tonight. This is the simplest one I have been through in 13 years. I mean... Well... We did do, we had two meetings in the fall to kind of I saw one address of it, which hopefully we had more influence. I know you weren't able to I attend. didn't get the, the second one, which I was frustrated with because of the audio with it. But that approach seems to be working, is to have the discussion ahead of 
the budget. The budget, yeah. and we've talked of it many years, but it's the first year it's been implemented. So kudos. Yeah, hopefully it carries over. So. Leadership. We'll get yeah. <laughs> Gee, thanks. We'll get <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Well, so you have a motion, but it needs to be seconded. I'll second it. All right, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.